today's video I'm going to take a slightly different departure uh, in fact a significantly different departure from the norm I'm not going to talk about business today I'm not going to talk about law except obliquely I'm going to talk about books another passion of mine I have a great passion for books for words for reading for literature and I'm going to share that with you in this video and if that sort of thing floats your boat or rings your bell or you're interested in books or you're interested in reading or you're thinking about or interested in getting back to reading having got away from it having got out of the habit of reading then this video hopefully will be useful and of interest to you so you might be interested in hitting the like button and subscribing because I will be doing further videos about books and about reading. In this video, I'm going to just touch upon the great joy that I've received in the last number of years from having developed a sort of a taste or a penchant for reading classic literature, classic books. I've been reading all my life, but in the last number of years, probably going back 10 years now, I have been reading a lot of classics. I have a Kindle and I have the Audible app. So between reading on the Kindle, reading physical books and listening to audio books on the Audible app, I consume quite a lot of books and classics in particular, I have developed a liking for or a taste for, an appreciation for, I suppose. And that's what I want to share with you in this video. I'm going to give you a number of classic books that I think you might like, you might consider if you have any interest in reading classic literature, reading classic books, or getting back to reading generally, then this video should be of interest to you and should be of assistance. So I'm going to run through a number of books. I'm going to list perhaps eight of them and put them out there, put them to you as suggestions of books that you might consider and I've tried to break it up or to strike a balance between books that are very easy and accessible and perhaps short and much more readable as opposed to sort of more weighty works which you might progress up to. So if you have got out of the habit of reading and you're interested in getting back into the habit of reading and you want to dip your toe in the classic literature water, then I have, as I say, a number of suggestions. The first one, and it's an easy book to read, is a book by J.D. Salinger called Catcher in the Rye. It's a very easy book to read. It's quite short. It's written from the perspective of a 17-year-old uh, young boy or young man. He's only 17. And the book is very written in a very subjective manner, a very laconic sort of a way. It's easy to read and it deals with teenage alienation and angst and various other issues, perhaps even mental illness or mental infirmity or difficulties and so on. The hero of the book is a young man called Holden Caulfield. The occurrence or the event or narrative happens over about a week or thereabouts, I think, and it ranges from California to New York City. It's a beautiful book, I think, absolutely beautiful. And from the very start, it drags you in with the friendly, open, connecting type of language and literature. So even though it's a classic and even though it's widely, I think it won the Pulitzer Prize and not 100%, but it is well worth reading and it is an easy enough read. And in terms of starting off reading classic books or classic literature, I think this is a good place to start because it's a good way, a good entree as it were into the whole area of classic literature. It's well worth a read. Second book that I would recommend, and again, it's an easy read. It's a novella by John Steinbeck. It's The Old Man in the Sea. It's the story of an old fisherman off the coast of Cuba who hasn't caught a fish for something like 84 days. And it 
basically tells the story of his battle, as it were, with a fish. And that might seem to you like a very simple plot. Nothing happens, etc., etc. But it's beautifully written. And then the relationship between the old man and the young boy who comes, I think, to his hut or to the beach every night to bring him food or whatever. Um, the relationship there is interesting, but the book is beautifully written. It's a typical Steinbeck type of book insofar as the words are short, the sentences are short, the paragraphs are short. It's very, very easy to read. It's a beautiful book. And if you, as I say, going to get into classic literature, this is an easy one. And it's a novella. That means it's a short novel. It's a beautiful book. Well recommended. The Old Man and the Sea by um, John Steinbeck. The next one I would... Well, the next one on my list is a book by Charles Dickens called Dombey and Son. Dombey and Son, I read it there last year or the year before. I actually read it a couple of times. I read it once and I listened to it in audio again. It's a super book, absolutely superb book and one of Dickens' underrated books in my view because it's one of my favourite Dickens books and I'm a huge fan of Dickens. Dombey and Son, it deals with this man's pride, it deals with this man's um, disappointment at having a daughter and not having a son and it deals with issues of class, sex, the social status, pride, um, the whole question of genealogy and handing down one's business and one's affairs to the son the f uh, and, and so on. And uh, but the the writing is fabulous. The characters are fabulous. They are so memorable, and some of the scenes are absolutely heartrending. And the attitudes, Victorian attitudes to women, to young girls, to social status, to your standing, and so on, is very very well explored. It's a longer book than the other two that I've mentioned, but it is something that you might progress to. And some of the words in it, some of the phrasing in it, some of the phrases and descriptions are absolutely wonderful. It also deals with issues of child cruelty and betrayal and deceit and themes like that. But it's uh, well worth reading, well worth sticking with. The next book then on my list is another book by Charles Dickens called Bleak House. If you've ever wondered why the legal system is apparently so slow or why you may have got tangled up with some legal issue or some legal case and it apparently has gone on for years then Bleak House will explain why and how this can happen. It's a serious attack on the legal system in Britain. Charles Dickens himself worked as a law clerk and was very very familiar with the workings of solicitors offices and so on very well familiar with the way that the whole court of chancery and so forth litigation progressed and how legal proceedings started and so on in the United Kingdom or in England and this particular book is really putting forward the proposition that the legal system in the UK is a pox on their houses as it were it's like a massive enveloping fog uh, bearing down on the country bearing down on the population because of the fact that it's so slow it's so costly it's so cumbersome to get involved in disputes and this particular case involves a probate matter uh, it's jarndyce and jarndyce is the proceedings it goes on for years and in fact the litigation goes on so long that a lot of the people, a lot of the judges have died and new judges have come in to the case and it seems at some points that nobody actually knows what the case is about. Now it actually happens to be about a probate case. It's about, I think, guardianship and uh, wards, um, wardship situation with, with children and so on. But it goes on for years and it is a serious attack on the legal system in England in the United Kingdom by Dickens who would have been very familiar with how it worked. The next book which you might have a look at would be by the only book ever completed by this author and 
The author is Emily Bronte, and the book is Wuthering Heights. It's an excellent book, really good yarn, really good story. Um, it has spawned all sorts of spin-offs, TV series, movies, and uh, Kate Bush obviously had the song about Wuthering Heights and so forth. Heathcliff is the the man, the founding, who features large in the book, and the love affair or the love between Catherine and uh, Heathcliff and so on is a central sort of focus of the book, a central part of the narrative and so on. Heathcliff then as an individual is by times brutal and by times not so brutal, but the book itself is incredibly popular and um, easy to read and it is sort of a gothic novel, but well worth a look. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. The book I would recommend that you read is a book by Emile Zola called Germinal. Germinal is about a minor strike in the north of France in the late 1800s and it deals with the appalling conditions of the working class. It deals with idealism, it deals with socialist ideas and the whole exploitation, I suppose, of the working class and the huge divide between the working class and the ruling class. This is also interspersed or tied into a love story between the characters. Some of the descriptions, some of the scenes of, for example, working in the mines, some of the crowd scenes are absolutely remarkable and are vivid and you would think that you are actually in the mine with some of the characters. So it's an easy book to read. It's called Germinal and it's written by Emile Zola and I'd strongly recommend. Next book I think you should consider, even though it's a very long one, I think it's 800 pages depending on who publishes it or who translates it, is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. It's essentially about class and about an affair, an extramarital affair between Anna and a dashing army officer and uh, it deals with all sorts of things like society in uh, in Russia, in Moscow, in St. Petersburg and it is a long book, there's no doubt about it, but it is well worth reading because it's Tolstoy and because some people say it's one of the finest books that's ever been written. I'm not 100% about that myself, but it is worth reading and reading some of the no Russian novelists as well is well, strongly advisable in my view. So Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and Turgenev and uh, people like that, Chekhov, I would strongly recommend. But Anna Karenina is an excellent book, well worth reading as I say, and uh, written by Leo Tolstoy. The next book, I'd recommend, and um, you could take a pick of any of Jane Austen's, but you couldn't put together any sort of a classic book list without including something by Jane Austen, would be Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice is about society, it's about marriage, it's about manners, it's about uh, social mores, it's about wealth, money, and uh, it is beautifully written and beautifully observed. And like all Jane Austen novels, you will chuckle to yourself uh, with regularity. The central theme of the novel is that the idea of marrying for love and not marrying for position or social status. But the problem with the book is, or the problem with that faced by uh, Mr. Bennett is that he had five daughters and without a son uh, to pass on his estate to, then it's going to be a serious problem down the line unless some of the girls marry, marry well. So um, the whole question of arranging a marriage and so forth is the one of the things that comes up and is dealt with. The problem for Mr. Bennett is that his land is entailed or his estate is entailed. Entailed means that it must go to a male heir and Mr. Bennett doesn't have a male heir, he has five daughters. So he needs one of the daughters to marry well and to, because without that, then he and the whole family may become destitute because the estate will pass out of their ownership because of the 
absence of a male heir. That's again the whole question of class and uh, sex and male v female or and, and so on and, and the degree to which society in those days was favouring, favoured big time the male. Another book, personal favourite that I'd put on the list, even though it's another Charles Dickens, is Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist is a fantastic account of child abuse, I suppose, and child uh, labour and the abuse of children in London in Victorian times. And it's to do with Fagin and his gang of kids that he's gathered around him who pickpocket. But some of the characters are very likeable, lovable, memorable. And Jack, a.k.a. John, a.k.a. The Artful Dodger, Dawkins, a.k.a. The Dodger, The Artful, Jack Dawkins, is one of the most memorable characters that I've come across in uh, Charles Dickens' writing, and he has written some fantastic, realistic, memorable characters. But The Artful Dodger is one of my favourites, and um, he is up on charges of pickpocketing in the local district court or the equivalent of the district court wherever he was charged and he gets up and he makes a speech in the court to uh, the Lord Chancellor or the um, main legal person in the state and basically says that he wants an appeal and he says that this isn't or this ain't the shop for justice but and he's referring to the court obviously but the artful dodger Master Bates Oliver Twist Fagin, these are incredibly memorable characters and Oliver Twist is a book that I think you'll really enjoy and if you've never read a classic book before it could be a good one to start because it is very accessible and um, very humorous and sad as well I suppose and uh, realistic and it gives you a good idea I suppose of how uh, kids, orphans and so forth were treated and how badly they were treated back in the Victorian times in London. And finally, the last book that I would refer today or recommend to you today would be Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. It's basically about the French Revolution and it tells the story over a number of years of various characters and how they're intertwined leading up to the French Revolution, which occurred in 1832. Book begins in 1815. The characters... Jean Valjean and uh, all of the other characters in it are very memorable. It's a fantastic story. It's obviously, you know, a historical novel as well, and it is soundly based in terms of being historically, uh, historically grounded anyway in the French Revolution and the conditions and the exploitation of the working class and so forth that led to the French Revolution. So Victor Hugo, Les Miserables, is another one that I recommend. I hope you find this video or this uh, list useful and uh, I hope it might encourage you to either dip your toe, as I say, in the water of classic literature or to revive an interest that you might have had. You may have had um, a good, good reading habits for years and you may have got away from it because of the other distractions that you have nowadays like social media and so on and so forth. It's ironic I suppose that I'm making a YouTube video about going back to and encouraging people to go back to reading and, um, and bewailing uh, the or upbraiding the presence of social media as a distraction and something that will prevent you from reading. But that's the irony, I suppose, of the situation we're in. But it's not an either or situation. You can do both. You can do social media, but you can also read. And I would strongly encourage you to read widely, to read voraciously, to read often. And uh, I hope that this list of classic books um, will be useful to you and might encourage you to start reading again, or at least if you are reading, to consider reading some of these classic books and that way explore <clears throat> the historical themes and times and places and epochs and so forth that are dealt with in those books. If you find this video of interest, if you want more videos about about books and about uh, reading generally and books, then leave a comment down below and let me know. 
if you do and if you want more recommendations and so on I'm prepared to do them but I do need to know that people are interested if they're not interested that's fine I won't bother doing any more I'll stick with the business and stick with the law but if you're interested in books it's a passion of mine it's a passion that I want to share and if you have that passion if you have that interest then hit the like button subscribe and leave a comment down below and I will make more of these videos in in times to come in due course thanks for watching